Hello everyone, I'm here once again and in today's video I would like to share the readings for this coming Sunday, March 24, 2023. To start with, let's have our opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, Lord God. Thank you for this opportunity that you gave us the time to listen to your words, O Lord. Please send us your Holy Spirit that we may understand the readings that we're going to take up. In Jesus' name, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, since we have already our opening prayer, let's proceed to the Gospel reading. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest Jesus by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, for fear that there may be a riot among people. When Jesus was in Bethany reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly genuine spike nard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured the oil on Jesus' head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? They, co they could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were, they were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you when and whenever you wish you can do good to them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand Jesus over to them. When they heard Judas, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand Jesus over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house. The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off entered the city and found it just as Jesus had told them. And they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve. And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to, to say to Jesus one by one, Surely it is not I? Jesus said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe! 
to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said a blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then Jesus took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you. I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to Jesus, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to Peter, Amen, I say to you. This very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And then all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. Jesus took with him Peter, James and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then Jesus said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. Jesus advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it, if it, that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not I will, but what you will. When Jesus returned, he found them asleep. He said to, them, to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, Jesus prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep. For they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. Jesus returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up. Let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priest and the scribes and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, the man, I shall, the man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. Judas came and immediately went over to Jesus and said, Rabbi, and Judas kissed Jesus. At this they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. One of the bits bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple, 
in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left Jesus and fled. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran and ran off naked. They laid Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed Jesus at a distance into the high priest courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, a laking. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and he will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. All that the high priest tore his garment. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What farther need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned Jesus as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They, blindfold, they blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophecy! And the guards greeted Jesus with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, you too were the Nazarene, you too with the Nazarene Jesus. But Peter denied it, saying, I never know nor understand what you are talking about. about. So Peter went out into the out, outer court, then the cock crowed. The maid saw Peter and began again to say to the Bible, Now on the occasion of the feast, Pilate used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison alone with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask Pilate to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For Pilate knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed Jesus over. But the chief priest stared up the crowd to have Pilate release, to have uh, Pilate release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, then what do you want me to do with the man you call, you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Why, whatever has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them 
and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers lead Jesus away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assemble the whole cohort. They clothe him in purple, and waving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Heal, King of the Jews, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry Jesus' cross. They brought Jesus to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine, drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified Jesus. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one of his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled Jesus, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priest with the scribes mocked him among, among themselves and said, He said he save, he save others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now. From the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with Jesus also kept abusing him. At noon darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, and at three o'clock Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Lima Sabachthani which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed and gave it to Jesus to, to give it to Jesus to drink, saying, Wait, let us see. Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breath his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two, from top to bottom. When the, when the centurion who stood facing Jesus saw this, so, so how Jesus breathed his last, the centurion said, Trolley. This man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of the younger James and of Jesus and Salome. These women had followed Jesus when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with Jesus to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. 
Pilate was amazed that Jesus was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when Pilate learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, Joseph took Jesus down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then Joseph rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jesus watched where Jesus was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Here, my brothers and sisters, today we're celebrating Palm Sunday, a special day in the story of Jesus. In the Gospel, we read about Jesus entering Jerusalem, a big city on a little donkey. The, ta the people were very happy, shouted, Hosanna! They put their coats and palm branches on the road for Jesus. The event fulfills an old promise from the Bible that said the king would come riding on a donkey instead of a big strong horse to show that he is a different kind of king. One of humility that Jesus had. Humility and peace, not someone who can care with force. As we go through this week from the joy of Palm Sunday to the sadness of the Good Friday, let's think about our own hopes and what we expect from God. Let's remember the true salvation come from Jesus, from Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, not not just from quick solutions to our everyday challenges. Let this week give you divine hope. Give us divine hope. So often we can be tempted toward discouragement and even worse. We can be tempted toward despair. But all is not lost for us either. Nothing can ultimately steal away our joy unless we left unless we let it. No hardship, no burden, and no cross can can care us if we remain if we remain steadfast. If we remain steadfast in Christ Jesus, in Jesus Christ our Savior. The people who cheered for Jesus in Palm Sunday turned against him later in the week. It makes us think about our own faith can sometimes be unsure. Let's use this Holy Week to reflect on our own lives, say sorry for our mistakes, and renew our commitment to follow Jesus. Amen. To follow Jesus, the humble, the humble King who loves us without limit, without limits. Brothers and sisters, I reflect today upon the contrast of emotions from Palm Sunday through Good Friday, ponder the fear, confusion, and despair that many would have as they saw Jesus murdered. Reflect also upon this being a divine act by which the Father permitted this grave suffering so as to use for the greatest good ever known. The Lord gave His life freely and calls you, calls us to do the same. Reflect upon the cross in your life, in our life. Reflect the cross in our life. Know that the Lord can use this for good, bringing forth an abundance of mercy through your free embrace. 
as you offer it to him as a willing sacrifice. Blessed Holy Week, everyone, brothers and sisters, put your eyes upon the Lord's cross as well as your own. Amen. Prayer, brothers and sisters, Lord, when we are tempted to despair, give us hope. Help us to see your presence in all things, even those things that are most troubling to us. May this Holy Week, Holy Week transform our darkest moments and weakness as we surrender all to you, our God. Jesus, we trust in you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's proceed to the first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning, and, uh, morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheek to those who plucked my bird, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here, my brothers and sisters, in the first reading, the servant speaks of himself as a preacher of God's word. God opened his servant's ear every day to receive his word, and he has been faithful in proclaiming it to others. However, those to whom he proclaims the word have often not responded with gratitude. He has been beaten, spot, and his bird plucked. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, let's proceed to the second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. Coming in human likeness and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here, my brothers and sisters, in the second reading, is this is a description of Jesus' willingness to humble himself for our sake. Rather than coming first as God and King, Jesus freely took on the form of human being. He was humiliated and oppressed following the will of the Father, in order to be the sacrifice for our sins. Yan po, brothers and sisters, that's how, <clears throat> that is how Jesus um, obey God's will. And this is how God the Father loves us all, that He gave His only one begotten Son for us, to save us from our sins. 
Yan po. Ganun po tayo kamahal ng ating God the Father that He is willing to send His only one begotten Son to redeem us. So we must say thank you God the Father for your love for us. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, thank you very much. And I hope na may nakukuha po kayong aral na may dagdag news yung pagdalo for the Mass for this coming Sunday. And once again, God invited us all to go and miss in the church every Sunday as it is in His commandments. Make holy the day of the Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. And... God bless us all. It's my life.